Welcome to Good Morning Tobago on Tobago Updates, your source for current affairs in Tobago, Trinidad and the region. With the perfect conversations to complement your morning routine, I am Candace Jackson and let's get started with the news in 90 seconds. The Tobago Jazz Experience 2023 was officially launched yesterday at the Shaw Park Cultural Complex under the theme Much More Than Music. The festival will take place over four days from April 20th to the 23rd. Kicking it off is a gospel night concert scheduled for the Shaw Park Cultural Complex on April 20th, headlined by artists such as Positive and Jonathan Nelson. On Saturday, April 22nd, the festival moves to Speyside, headlined by Richie Spice and Bl Everton Blender. Meanwhile, Boys to Men and Kofi will headline the International Night on Sunday, April 23rd. Chairman of the Tobago Festivals Commission, John Arnold, promised there would be surprises for the International Night. Tickets for the Tobago Jazz Experience go on sale from Friday. Meanwhile, one of the bodies discovered on the Mauritanian pirogue has been identified. On May 28, 2021, Bell Garden fishermen encountered a foreign fishing vessel containing 14 decomposing bodies and brought it ashore. Authorities determined the pirogue came from the Islamic Republic of Mauritania and contacted the country to identify the bodies. DNA samples were taken from the bodies and sent for testing with the help of relatives with missing family members. One of the bodies was ident identified as Aslan Snow. And nationally, former Prime Minister Basdeo Pandey described news of the dropping of corruption charges in the Piaco Airport project as a relief. Director of Public Prosecutions Roger Gaspard withdrew the corruption case against Pandey, his wife Omar, former Minister Carlos John and businessman Ishwa Gabaran Singh on Monday. In a radio interview, Pandey said the case against him has been a burden for over 18 years and he can now reconstitute his life. Pandey also added that it seems as though he cannot be forgiven for building the finest airport in the Caribbean. And that was your news in 90 seconds. Well, viewers, it is International Women's Day. And for all you women locked on, I want to wish you all a happy International Women's Day as we celebrate who we are as women. And, um, you know, just to break things into a little bit of a context, you know, the theme for this year's International Women's Day from the UNDP is that of digital innovation and technology for gender equality. And just to put this into context, um, just quoting now from the UNDP's website, um, from the earliest days of computing to the present age of virtual reality and artificial intelligence, women have untold contributions to the digital world in which we increasingly live. Their accomplishments have been against all odds in the field that has historically neither welcomed nor appreciated them. Today, a persistent gender cap in digital access keeps women from unlocking te technology's full potential. Their underrepresentation in STEM education and careers remains a major barrier to their participation in tech design and governance. And the, the basis threat of online gender-based violence coupled with a lack of legal recourse too often forces them out of the digital spaces they occupy. And again, to further put some more context into this, they provided some statistics. You know, women make up only 22% of artificial intelligent, art intelligence workers globally. A global analysis of 133 AI systems across industries found that 44.2% of them demonstrate gender bias. And additionally, and of course, this one hits home to people like me, um, a survey of women journalists from 125 countries found that 73% have suffered violence in the course, online violence on the course of their work. 
you know, sometimes as women, it seems as though we get easily attacked online. And we've certainly had um, evidences of it. You know, men don't experience the same level of, you know, um, attacks online as women do. But these are just some of the things that, you know, we have chosen, um, the UNDP has chosen to highlight as we recognize this year's International Women's Day, um, you know, are some of the things that we need to focus on and perhaps, you know, look at the way that we behave, look at the way that we relate to others, especially when it comes to technology, when it comes to our online dealings, to know, make, to, 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 to sort of balance the scales a bit. That doesn't mean that we attack men more, but it also, but it means that maybe we should be kinder to our women. All right, so now moving on with our show this morning. Well, viewers, we have on set with us Miss Billy Sterling Lewis, who is uh, the director of Impact Change Concepts, and she's a motivational speaker. And we are speaking about, yeah, International Women's Day today, as well as something wonderful that she has planned for women. Good morning and welcome to you. Happy International Women's Day. Thank you. Good morning and happy International Women's Day to you also and to all of Tobago, Trinidad and wherever you're watching from. All right. So, you know, give us your perspective on this year's theme, you know, you know, that equity when it comes to digital, um, world, the digital mm -hmm. world and technology and so on for women. You know, what are your perspectives on that? Well, it is a really interesting theme. The thing about it, the way the international themes are developed, it's developed to cover the entire world. And for us in Trinidad and Tobago, we don't have that great an issue. Not that we don't have an issue mm -hmm. with women in technology per se, but it's not as great as other areas, like for instance, some parts of Africa. Not all of Africa, some parts of Africa, some parts of Asia, and other developing areas in the world. Um, so what this does, it, it opens us for us in the Caribbean, in Trinidad and Tobago, in, in the US and other parts of the Western world, opportunities to do more. The truth is, no matter how far we have come, we do not ever get to the mark that we need to be at mm -hmm. when, it comes, when it comes to women and equality and equity. I'm one who doesn't necessarily promote equality only, but it's about equity. equity yes. It's about what do I need to be that all that I have been created to be. And so in our sphere, what we see is that a lot more girls are moving in. We have our smartphones, we have our tablets, we have our computers, and our girls are tech savvy. Right, and they're using it for education. We see more girls. I love to see the STEM office across the hall there. Mm -hmm. We have more girls in science. We have more girls in in STEM tech, um, education. Um, but what we do have happening is that so many times at the on the reverse side, it is being used in negative ways. Mm. And so for me, the way I envision the theme is getting our girls who are not yet there, because we have some persons still in rural areas who are in poverty, who are still not up to the mark technologically. We need to expand and reach out to them, definitely. But when we bring them in, we need to have a program where all our girls understand the power of technology and how to use it in a positive way. We have seen so many issues of gender-based violence where technology is concerned, yes. where girls are being posted over the media in, um, in nude, and the, you talked about um, um, women in journalism being attacked. What mm -hmm. we find is that girl-on-girl -girl violence with technology tends to be very high, you know? Mm -hmm. So these are the things we want to do as we empower our girls to come up, to see the value, the power um, of technology, teach them to use it in a way that doesn't bring their um, power and their value down. Now tell me, how do we get to that point where we can really reach out to whether it's our girls or actually society as a whole mm -hmm. to sort of change some of the behaviors that we exhibit online. Yeah. Listen, education is always the first step. Um, education, understanding, support. When we talk about education, I know the Division of Health um, back then was social protection. Um, so family development. Yes. They ran a program, even before that, from the gender unit, where they looked at, you post it, you lose it. So we teach people that the internet is a holding space, the World Wide Web. So whatever you put out there stays there. Mm -hmm. And that's why so many times people have moved past that 
but somebody brings something up from 10, 15 years ago. We educate them and then we give them opportunities, even in their own sphere of, of, of influence and operation, to use the technology in a way that will benefit them. So as a 16-year-old, what can I do with my technology? What can I do with my smartphone? Mm -hmm. Besides TikTok and, you know, go on whatever else, Instagram, they go on now. They yeah. call me old now and I don't know how that <laughs> happened. But yes, how do I use my technology in a way that's going to push me into the next era of my life? Um, it's especially important at the teenage level, but also for the men um, and the young boys. We teach them the same thing. Mm -hmm. How do we use our technology in a way? And then we provide the opportunities for them to actually use it in a way that benefits them and pushes them into their purpose. Now, when it comes to, I mean, I'm gonna, I want to touch on equity a little mm -hmm. bit, but um, before that, I want to get into why do you think that women are more susceptible to being bullied online and being attacked online than men? Well, here's how I'd, I'd start answering that question. Why are women susceptible to most of the violence anyway? Hmm. You know, going back in society, women were often, we were seen as inferior. Yes. Actually, I have the privilege of teaching gender and psychology at the University of the West Indies. And this is one of the things, I have a bunch of powerful girls in the class, young women, and we talk about that to see them come to that place where they understand women were always seen as inferior. They started way back when in the early 1800s by mm -hmm. saying we were inferior because our brain was smaller. <laughs> yes, yes, on the man's brain. And then they, they, they linked it to labor and tasks. And so even up to today, we still have the issue of gender-based violence and this, there still is the perception that women are less important, they're inferior, they're more, well, we know they're more vulnerable. And so they tend to face a lot more. Now, in today's world also, as women try to break that glass ceiling, mm -hmm. there is resistance. You're not going to bring somebody from the dredges up and not have resistance yes and so we have that as women move into the political sphere as women move into um higher education and we're seeing that most of our universities 60 percent plus are female enrollment as they move into the education as they move into business ownership and small business even look at that most of our small businesses are female-led mm. our larger corporations are male so there's still that disparity, that inequality. And so as they push and then when and we're break talking about ceiling, we're not yes. just saying that you have to have fifty percent women involved. No. So. No. Not it doesn't have to be equality in terms of fifty, fifty, half yes. and half, but it has to be equity. So as they push that glass ceiling, there comes that resistance. There are men who still feel you shouldn't be out of the home. Mm. And so the violence is perpetuated. There are bosses who still feel that women's role in the organization is to provide um, a good look and a, and, and a satisfying sexual experience. Trust me. And I love sis, sis, um, singing Sandra's song, Keep Your Money, I'll Keep My Honey, and Die With My Dignity. Those are the things that we see coming out. Mm -hmm. So the violence continues because there's still a perception that women are not equal to men and don't have the capacity as men do. Right. And now, I mean, as we, we we're moving over the conversation, now you are having something very special, something that you've done quite a few times um, in the past, and that is an International Women's Day Empowerment Cocktail. Yes. Not just a cocktail, but we have WE. It is the Women's Healing and Empowerment Seminar. It's held every year to commemorate International Women's Day. This is the first time I'm having the cocktail, so I'm very happy and excited about that. So that's this evening. Mm -hmm. But the Women's Seminar is really a forum where we bring women together of all levels because I'm about bringing all of us together, um, and to share and to empower. So this year, we're having the Empowerment Cocktail at this evening at 6 p.m. Invitation only. I'm, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> but we have the Empowerment Training Seminar, which is Thursday and Friday, 9 to 3, both days. And this year, we have a special guest along with myself um, looking at the issue of grief and grief growth and recovery. Mm. We have seen women go through grief in astronomical ways in the last two, three years. Well, on a whole, but we yes, know what certainly. COVID has done. The loss of income, the loss of relationship, the loss of life, the loss of esteem, the loss of so many things. And we are... The goal of we this year is to help women understand how to go through that grief um, process and grow mm. and grow. There's always growth that can come out of grief if we understand how to approach it and go through it with the right support. So persons who are out there, they are free to, we can still take you in for the seminar um, to Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. You can give me a call, 294-3444 or WhatsApp. 
Mm -hmm. and you'll be able to get on. There's a cost involved, but we will work with you. And where is this taking place? So the cocktail will be held at Shepherd's Inn this evening. Um, again, I must repeat, if you got the invitation, you're in. Mm -hmm. It's not open because we have the limited resources, but definitely it will be um, shared. But um, the empowerment training session, the training seminar will be held at Bonacord in um, Multipurpose Center, um, 9 to 3, Thursday and Friday. And we have a special guest, somebody I worked with years ago when I lived in Barbados, Dr. J. We call her Dr. J, but she's Janelle Chase Meyer. She's also a therapist. She's a grief specialist my, like myself. We have worked in addiction for over 10 years. We have been in the field. Mm. And she is just powerful. She also runs this fit movement. So what both of us do in our work is that we incorporate holistic healing. We don't just do psychotherapy because we understand the brain is only one part of this whole dynamic body. So and healing and recovery engages, must engage all of who we are. So she'll be here. She arrives this evening from Barbados, but we're looking forward to a powerful time Thursday and Friday in the training seminar on grief and grief recovery. All right. So you women out there who, you know, might be struggling a bit because, hey, we, I mean, it's been a tough year, yeah. tough couple of years, I should say. Yes. So, I mean, get connected and um, reach out to Miss Billy and, yeah, experience some, some, some encouragement and some help. Yeah. Definitely. And again, 294-3444, you could WhatsApp or call, and we will be able to accommodate you. All right. Well, thank you so much for being on with us. Viewers, you have a lot more on the program, so please don't go anywhere because we'll be back right after the break.